Hey everybody, welcome to Eric's Adventures and welcome to the channel. On today's video, we will be installing a new front bumper on the Lexus GX470. So, behind me, you can see I have a front and rear bumper. It's going to be a two-part video. we we'll do the front bumper and then the rear. This is from Ascend Fabrication, a uh, small shop in Minnesota, but this is tubular style bumper. I think this is one of the best looking ones, so this is why I bought it. So yeah, we're gonna start by installing this. First thing we're gonna do is pull the Lex into the garage and start by taking out the uh, fender liners and getting the front bumper off and removing the fog lights. To remove the fender liner, it is going to be six of these T30 uh, screws. So one, two, and then the other ones are up in here. And then this is, I think a 10 millimeter. And so this will come out and then you have these clips which are a pain in the butt you'll probably break some of these but you have to squeeze these two ends and push it out so the t30 screws go into this hole and then under the front bumper you're gonna have two screws here and here these are gonna be a 10 millimeter or a phillips head screwdriver so You'll take those off and then the fender liner uh, should be a little loose. And then you can see this one here and here, those are those uh, plastic uh, pins, holder things. And you'll most likely break those, but just use a uh, like a trim removal tool and stick it in and try to pry them off. Otherwise use a screwdriver and be prepared to replace them. Now that those two bolts are loose, this will come down. And because the whole front bumper is replaced, you're gonna have to end up cutting this up here. So just kind of push it down to get clearance of the fog light. So we can see the fog light in here. You're gonna grab this pin and wiggle, and this should come out. And so do this on both sides. And then I think there's gonna be another bolt right in here. So this is gonna hold the bumper onto the body. So remove this from both sides. And then I think you can start prying the bumper out after that. Now that I've got both sides taken apart, fog lights unplugged. There's some clips in here under the hood. These are broken, so I'm just gonna pull them out like this. Here's one. There we go. Here's two. Uh, you can I can just end up tossing these, and then yeah, there's gonna be one clip here, one here, and maybe one here. But this one's gone. So three clips underneath this plastic shroud that you're gonna have to end up taking out. If you've been following my build, you know I installed an RCI filler plate. The OE splash shield is similar. These are going to be two 10 millimeter bolts. The splash shield or bumper filler that I had came out two 10 millimeter bolts and now the bumper is ready to come out. You have to put the front bumper off just right here. Pull off. Make sure everything's unclipped. Bolt I missed. Got that last bolt out. And there we go. Front bumper cover is off. And now we're going to remove this uh, impact guard. So there's four bolts on each side. And grab a wrench and take those off. Eight bolts holding the front uh, support are going to be 14 millimeter. I've got a breaker bar and I'm going to take these off. They're not super tight, so I'm just going to use this to loosen them and then I'm going to use a uh, ratchet to get them all the way off.
all the bolts are off, all the nuts are off, we can just shimmy this out and slide this. And the core support is off. Now that the support's gone, we're gonna remove this black metal piece. So you've got two bolts here on each side under the headlights and fender. We've got it here, got one here, and then under here as well. These are 10 millimeter, so I'm gonna use my Milwaukee and put them off. Now, this bracket will come off. This middle one might come off. This end one will come off. And then this middle one is There's a 10 millimeter screw right here that I forgot. Uh, it's kind of hidden under the plastic, so that's why it's kind of hard. So once you've got that off, hopefully it should just come right out. Maybe. some reason it's not but these little brackets here that stick out under the headlights on this side and this side they do help mount the headlights themselves so you can see under here what we're going to need to do is trim these brackets and obviously this one doesn't come off I think it's glued or something so this one will get trimmed here but make sure that the brackets stay on so the headlights are supported from the underside. Now, let's cut these brackets off. This is the headlight right above this, and so I'm gonna cut this off. And there we go. So this is cut pretty flush. I will now deburr the edges and paint it to keep it from rusting, but yeah. Basically clear that bracket, make sure the headlight can still get mounted, and you're good to go. You can see that I've got these brackets trimmed down. I spray painted them a little bit just to keep them from rusting out. And yeah, here it is. So now, moving on to the next step. Next thing we're going to do is, uh, on the fender flare side, this plastic bracket between these two tabs is going to come off. So. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. And this bracket comes off. And in the kit, you've got this bag called uh, fender flares. So you're gonna put a nut, washer, and bolt through here to hold the fender flare onto the metal bracket because we're getting rid of these plastic ones. When you put in the new bolt, you're gonna put the bolt in from the outside, you're gonna put the washer and then the nut on the inside. It's gonna go like this, and then in here, washer, nut, and this is going to be a 13 millimeter, so you're gonna need a socket and a wrench, and the wrench will go on the inside to hold the nut in place. And there we go. 
on the front of the Lexus, there's a couple more things I need to do before starting to install the bumper. So this line here uh, needs to get relocated. So it's got a clip with a hole. What I'm gonna do is pop this off and check the hole size and then drill a hole up here and move this up and then cut off this end of the bracket. And then this for the transmission cooler, you can see it's kind of an angled bracket here and here on this side. So uh, you're gonna bend these straight to move this line closer to the car. When you do that, this uh, kind of center support brace is gonna get in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch this out so this has space. And then lastly, this piece right here is gonna have to come out completely. There's two spot welds, so I'm gonna drill those out and pop this piece off. This is the driver's side transmission bracket. Grab some big pliers and just start to bend it up. Grab the bracket here. And Now if I bend this up, this will have room to go much closer in. So I'm gonna do the same for the passenger side here. So a lot more clearance now. So I've got the hole drilled up here, but unfortunately I broke the clip. So we're gonna have to get a little creative. What I'm gonna do is take two zip ties and take this one here and loop it around like this and put it through this hole to hold the line. And I'm going to stick the open end through this hole and pull this tight so it's up and out of the way. And then I'm going to take a second zip tie from the bottom and zip it up. And this will hold the bracket to the hole. So like this. So you can see now that the brat, this line is pretty sturdy in here. And yeah, I'm gonna cut the ends off and it'll look good. The last thing I'm gonna do is cut off the excess bracket. So I've got my little cutoff wheel and I'm just gonna start trimming this off. came off. Now I'm uh, gonna deburr this and paint it and ready to move on. Hi. Right. for the front end we are pretty much done. This bracket is trimmed off and this line is pushed back. These two are bent up and that uh, support is gone. Threw a little bit of paint on it and most importantly this piece here you can see I kind of hammered it flat so this line is more flush. So yeah, this front is good to go. Then now the next thing I've got to do is trim the mud flaps or inner wheel liners. So here's the front fender liner. I've got a paint pen and what I'm going to do is push it all the way up and just mark it out kind of where I need to trim. So kind of see my line and I'm going to start from there. You can trim this with a knife or something, but I've got some scissors and these should be good enough. So see, cuts pretty easily. So I've got a razor blade. And and just don't cut your tire. <laughs> and 
there we go. So now I'll line this up up here. And uh, obviously there's a little bit of an edge here, a little up here, so I'll clean this up. But yeah, I'll, I'll clip this up and it'll be completely clear and out of the way. There are these two plastic tabs that stick out here and here. We're gonna use a Dremel to cut these out. And this is because the wings come out this way and they're gonna hit. So uh, I marked these out where I'm gonna cut it. Remember, safety glasses and some gloves. <laughs> screwdriver to kind of pry it off it's still a little bit hot from the plastic but here we are uh, I gotta cut this edge here but that'll be easy to get rid of up a little bit and then there's this bracket here so I'm gonna end up uh, cutting this bracket off too. See if I can bend it down first. That's the front one, and now we can get the rear. Came off. So yeah, super smooth. Uh, I'm gonna try to clean up these edges a little bit, but on that, we should have no problems fitting the wings now. And there's actually one more piece. So right here at the front, this plastic piece. I'm gonna zip this one right off. Final things we're gonna do before installing this front bumper is trim off these brackets. So the wings come out and they're gonna run into this. But when you trim it, be careful because this plastic piece right here is what mounts the headlight. So I've got it marked out here. So this is how I'm gonna trim it. And then I'm gonna trim this bottom piece this way. Trim off these studs and this is gonna make it a lot easier to uh, get clearance here. Don't touch because it's hot. And now you're gonna have enough clearance to start cutting. And I'll clean this up, but here we go. And then now I'm gonna trim off this piece here. There we go. 
bend this other piece back up, but yeah, I'll clean this up, uh, paint it a little bit to make sure it doesn't rust, but yeah, here we go. The additional uh, support brackets, and these are gonna be just extra support for the front bumper. What we're gonna do is this line here, there's a bolt, this is a 12 millimeter. It's on both sides, so you're gonna remove this and the bracket mounts like this to the frame. So that bolt is gonna get reused into this top hole and then this bottom hole is gonna be this threaded hole right here. So what I'm gonna do is I have an M12 by 1.25 tap. I'm gonna clean up the threads and you're given hardware. So I'm gonna take this off and clean up the threads and mount that new bracket on both sides and then get ready to start mounting the front cradle. This bracket is loose. This bottom hole, I've got some uh, thread co cutting compound on this tap and just gonna start to uh, clean up these threads a little bit. So just clean all the gunk out of the threads and this is gonna make it way easier to install that new bolt. See all the crud that came out. So yeah, uh, cleaning the threads is gonna make your life a whole lot simpler. You see, it looks way, way nicer. Now, to get this bracket, um, I found, stick it up this way, rotate it, move the, uh, Transline bracket and there we go. It'll get kind of in place. Once the bottom hole lines up, thread this bolt in, but leave it loose because then when you put the front uh, cradle in, this will adjust based on where it needs to go. And then line up the transmission cooler line with this hole and the kit provides new hardware so use that use the bolt and washer get everything lined up and tighten it down This is what the reinforcement brackets are gonna look like on both sides. So it's gonna bolt into these and then you're gonna have additional bolts here. It's just gonna be extra support if you got a winch out or uh, gotta pull on this bumper. Got the bumper up on uh, a jack and I have this mini skid that goes on here that kind of protects the radiator. So three holes, uh, I've got some hardware. You've got a bolt a nut and a washer and I'm gonna get this installed now before this goes on the car and this is gonna make it a lot easier so just kind of line it up put the bolt in from the inside put it here and then you're gonna do a washer and then this nylock nut and installing this while it's off makes it a lot easier versus trying to do it once you've got the bumper already put on. 13 millimeter nut and 13 millimeter bolt tied. A fair lead mounted on the front. And now from the backside, I will mount the winch. So there's holes here to hold it in. Uh, there's some square nuts that keep it held. And this is just gonna be a lot easier to mount the winch into the cradle before it gets installed onto the car. I'm using a one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch long bolt, a uh, lock washer and a normal washer from the underside. And then the winch in here, it uses these square bolts that basically um, keep them from rotating and you don't have to worry about sticking a wrench in there to keep them from spinning. So I got the rear ones on, now I'm gonna get the front, and then after that, should be able to start getting this mounted onto the GX. Time to put the center section onto the car. So I've got this kind of split beam thing uh, on a floor jack to help hold it in place and even it out. 
if you don't have this, definitely get a second person to help you because by yourself, this is going to be very, very difficult. So I'm a little bit low. I'm going to go up. Kind of adjust as needed. Up a little bit more. Now that pretty much seated, I've got my hardware kit. So you're gonna have these aluminum plates. So these will go on the outside here. And then the one stud on the inside is gonna get a washer and you have all brand new nuts to put on. So before you put these in, uh, adjust it to whatever height, make sure that the distance between the top stud in here is the same on both sides. And yeah, uh, I'll show you once it's tightened down. Now that I have the uh, front center section on, uh, this plastic piece I'm gonna remove. There was a couple, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, plastic rivets. I broke all of them and yeah, that's my uh, neighbor C8, it sounds real good. Uh, so those are gonna get replaced, but because this isn't mounted to anything, I'm thinking I'm gonna cut it right here and right here, but then keep the top piece and then just get rid of this bottom piece. But for now, this is removed and I got a lot more room to work. So I still have to route the cables for the winch. I still have to tighten down all the bolts and this is gonna give me a lot more room. I have the front center section mounted and you're going to have three bolts here on the outside with the aluminum plate. On the inside, you're going to have this bolt for the stud. This top bolt is for the reinforcement plate. So if you didn't get this, you're not going to have this. Uh, I put this bolt on the inside and then the nut on the inside. That was just the easiest way to do it. And then there's another one down here if you could see it let me focus this one is the bottom one for the reinforcement plate this is that mini skid we installed earlier but yeah this one's got a hole down here you stick a wrench to hold it and then you can get it from the inside and it's the same thing for the other side and then the winch cables i routed behind the winch up here up through under the headlight and then I got it directly to the battery. Since I don't have lights or anything, it's gonna be directly to the battery. But eventually, once I get a little light bar to fill this spot, uh, I will put it on a switch panel. For now, this is good enough. So here's both sides. Now uh, I can put on the wings and then there's these filler plates that go under the headlights to uh, not have a gap. And that's why we trim these for the wings to fit. So yeah, I'll show you how that looks. Here is the uh, little front plate. Um, it gives you some 3M uh, adhesive molding tape. And this will go like this underneath and help fill the gap. So you're gonna put some 3M tape up here and it's just gonna stick to the bottom of the headlight. So make sure before you do this, you clean up the surface under the headlight really well and make sure it sticks. I've got the 3M tape in uh, three pieces so it could follow the curve a little bit easier. And now it's just gonna mount up here like this. I've got the filler mounted onto the headlight and now I can get ready to mount the wings. So I got the hybrid wings, they make plated ones too. Uh, so this is gonna mount here like this and yeah. Uh, a couple bolts. Make sure you leave about a quarter to half inch gap because the frame and body do move separately from each other and you don't want this moving up or down and hitting your fender. Now here is the wing installed. I made sure to keep the gap about the same. So you will have 17 millimeter bolt heads and 19 millimeter nuts. Uh, these are facing inside because the bolt head is most exposed so that's why keep the threads uh, clear. 
this up here and this one here have a weld nut on the inside of the tube on the wing and then this one has a bolt and nut on the inside but you have to put the nut on the outside because of the angle you're never going to be able to fit the bolt in the other way so this is how it mounts up this is how it looks and now i just have a metal filler plate that goes right here to kind of close the gap on the gx to install this filler plate it's going to be a four millimeter hex socket on this button head screw and then a 10 millimeter uh nut on the inside so easily accessible with a wrench and then a socket on top and backing out this is how it looks still got to install the other side but yeah i think this looks pretty good not gonna lie so here we go the second to last thing was reinstalling this plastic panel you could see i cut it so it doesn't flop but still uh, provides a little bit of protection up here um, I broke the clip, so I've got this plastic fastener set from Harbor Freight. These are great. I use these nine millimeter ones. Just put a couple in here. And now the last piece is this aluminum piece, which goes on the front, closes up some of the big holes, but there's still enough space to reach in and hit the clutch on the, uh, winch. And yeah. Okay. Here's the last piece. It uses four, five, six, uh, eight of these button head uh, bolts. These are five millimeter uh, hex head socket. So this just kind of protects it. But again, enough room to reach up in and grab the winch clutch. But yeah, here, I'll close the hood. This is what it looks like. Tons of high clearance. I am very excited. I think this thing looks absolutely fantastic. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And the brand is Ascend Fabrication. They do a front and rear bumper. This works for the Lexus GX platform, for the uh, Toyota 4Runner, and even the Toyota Tacoma. So check them out. I'll link their website in the description below. And thanks. See you next time.